Mike Trenum at the uh, East Coast Music Awards. Dan Hill has joined us. This is a sort of a reunion for me. I remember our interview many, many years ago in Bathurst, New Brunswick, when I was at CKBC Radio. And uh, in many respects, I was starting out as a as a journalist and a broadcaster, and uh, um, you were the same in terms of you were touring up there. And it was, just, it was just a delight to have you here tonight. Well, it's great. As you were saying earlier, it's like full circle. We were both rookies, and uh, so you kind of developed a bond. And, I think at this point we get points just for surviving. <laughs> yeah, I think so. There's something I raised with you at that meeting we had then way back was that my first time of seeing you was at a, a festival in, in London, Ontario, right. a folk festival yes. where it was pouring downpour rain. It was just drenched. People were covered in, in garbage bags and umbrellas and waiting for you to come on stage. The stage is all lit up and there's nothing happening and someone in the middle of the crowd shouts out we're not leaving until he comes out and play and I remember at that time it was such a special concert when you came out and it was just a, it was an amazing moment for everyone yeah I still have wonderful memories of that concert and you know it's almost to sound sentimental it's almost like uh, remembering your first love affair you know those first early years of your career have a kind of a special kind of a surreal awe, awe to it that you know you, you will always remember right to the last days of your life I, I it's been a remarkable time for you in terms of uh, what's happened I, I, I think everyone's aware of the uh, you know the accomplishments of music and uh, uh, the book though I, I, and and that's that's has it had the kind of impact you expected what what's what's your reaction to it now it's been out for a while well it's actually had greater impact than I expected because um, uh, just like when I write songs, I don't really have any expectations. I just write the songs. Or in this case, I wrote the book because my father had died and I missed him so much and had such an interesting, tumultuous, love-hate relationship with him that the, the way to seal the or deal with the wounds and the loss was to write the book. So I wasn't even thinking it was going to be released. And then, bam, three and a half years later, everybody wanted the book. And then now it's literally just come out around the world. So it's in terms of commercial impact, if you want to use those words, it's done way better than I ever thought it would. I guess, I think what I learned from all this is uh, similar to what I've learned through songwriting is that every family has a story. You know, we all have stories. We all have conflicts and tragedies and miracles and love and difficulties. And uh, really my story, it was just a dramatic variation on everybody's story. And I think that's why the book seemed to touch a nerve. Yeah, there's um, an issue that's emerged recently that I wanted to ask you about because I knew we'd be getting together. One was the Juno Awards where you presented, right. and there were some comments made in, uh, sort of with respect to this, um, the, the folk roots not having sort of a presence on the program, which you've, you know, I know you've heard in the past. It's, uh, but then there was the announcement from the Grammy Awards recently where they're, they're reducing the number of... Uh, of uh, awards and the, the number. Do you have any thoughts on that in terms of, because you, you see it from both sides, I think. Well, you know, I think roots music or folk music is, is, is really, really a seminal part of all, all music. So I think it definitely should be recognized in, in Junos and Grammys. So um, in a sense, one of my earlier incarnations was as a, as a folk singer, you know, so um, it influences all that we listen to. You know, even rap music comes from the early strains of of folk music and the dub poets and the, the, the beat poets of the 50s. So I, I think that it, it definitely should be a category that is, is being um, you know, uh, out there for the public to be made more aware of through awards. There's um, uh, some discussion for a number of years now in terms of uh, uh, the music industry itself, in terms of what's happening with it. And I, I read on Maple Post recently, uh, there was a lot of discussion that took place that it was the MP3 that hurt uh, um, uh, music and uh, and sales and I, I tend to think it was a CD and then I look at the albums I have still of yours if they'd stuck with albums all these years I, I sometimes one because when we were buying your album it wasn't just the album it was uh, the sound system that you you know friends would gather around I've got this sound and now that it seems so compact sure. and is that and you, you, I don't get that sense that you get the quality of the sound out of some of the music that's being shared well I think it's sort of like a lot of other things when you go um, see a movie you're not just going to see a movie you're going for the whole experience of the movie theater the popcorn the seats um, when you go to dinner you know you don't go to dinner just for the food in a, in a way dinner is your own theater you and say your girlfriend or wife you know are, it's very much the ambience and the mood so 
The same is true with music. The songs, of course, are the most important, the, the, the music and the singing, but the ambience, the, the context with which it, it, it is um, being able to be purchased is very, very important. And so I do think something was really, really lost when, a, when vinyl fell out of fashion. Um, I think the other, the other problem is a complicated problem. One of the problems is the record companies, in a sense, really shot themselves in the foot because it was getting cheaper and cheaper to make CDs yet they were charging the consumer more and more. In, in a sense, though, it was, there, there was rife for a kind of a revolution, in, in a sense, because people just got tired of being gouged by the record companies, and then suddenly they discovered they could download these records for free. Well, you know, I know our original interview, I still have a copy on Real for Real. And, and, um, and someday I'll put the, the two together when we have our radio station. And I, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled just to get a moment with you. It's, it's like going so far back. Well, I'm so thrilled. You know, I've always loved coming to the Maritimes. I started performing in the Maritimes the, the, in 75, uh, opening up to Murray McLaughlin. And uh, so, you know, um, you know, you could say that probably most people <laughs> that are seeing this interview weren't even born the first time I, I toured across the Maritimes. So it, it remains a very, very special place in my heart. Well, I, that's it. I've I've had my, uh, <laughs> my just just wonderful. It really Thank has. You. I I just uh, Dan Hill. I might try him at the East Coast Music Awards. <laughs>